Hello friends, welcome to Science Stories with me, Mrs. C. Today I'll be reading a book titled, Book of How Things Work. This is a really fun book with all sorts of different science facts in it. It's really interesting. Before we begin, let's listen to some of the vocabulary words that you'll hear as I read today. Book of How Things Work. Here are six words that I want to review with you so you have a good understanding of what they mean while I read. The first vocabulary word is temperature. Next we have engine. Our third word is preserve. Our fourth word is skyscraper. Next we have lens. And our last word is oxygen. Let's look at these six words with their definitions and some pictures to help us. The first word is temperature. Temperature is the measure of hotness or coldness measured with a thermometer. So a lot of times when we think of the temperature, we think of what it feels like outside, right? If it's a hot sunny day or if it's a cold day in the winter, maybe a cloudy day. Some thermometers will have Celsius on one side and Fahrenheit on the other side. Usually in the United States, if we're telling the temperature, we'll use Fahrenheit. Outside is not the only thing that has a temperature. Our bodies have a temperature too. Sometimes you might need your temperature taken if you have a fever and your parent needs to see how warm or how hot your body has become. It can be dangerous if it gets too hot. Our next word is engine. An engine is a machine with moving parts that converts power into motion or movement. So a lot of times if you think of an engine, you probably think of a car, right? Something with a big engine. The engine helps the car drive and go, right? Makes that motion. But lots of things have smaller engines too. A lot of things that you might use for yard work, they have smaller engines in them as well. They do the same thing. They convert power into motion. Sometimes that's with gas. Sometimes that's with electricity from batteries and things like that. But they're all creating some sort of motion. Our third vocabulary word is preserve. To preserve means to maintain something in its original or existing state. So that means it's not changing. Right here, we have some fruits and vegetables that have been preserved. That means they're gonna stay good for a very long time so you can still eat them. Right here, we have some insects or bugs that have been preserved inside this amber. Over here, this does Clear Springs Nature Preserve. So that means this is an area of land that people don't want to change. They don't want buildings to be built or trees to be cut down. They want to keep it in this original state. They want to keep it natural and beautiful. So preserve means to keep something in its same or existing state. Our next word is skyscraper. A skyscraper is a very tall building of many stories or floors. So not stories like the book I'm reading, right? That means how many levels up it can go. Sometimes that's called stories, sometimes that's called floors. So you can see in this beautiful skyline, some of the skyscrapers are really, really tall. It almost looks like they're touching or scraping the sky, right? That's where that word comes from, skyscraper. Next, we have lens. A lens is a piece of transparent, that means you can see through it, transparent material that has two opposite regular surfaces, either both curved or one curved. So a lot of times when we have a pair of eyeglasses, we'll just call them glasses, right? But this part is called the lens. And the other part that holds the lens in is usually just called the frame. So this is the lens. This is the part that actually helps you to see better if you need help. You can also have a contact lens. So you pop that right onto your eye and that can help with your vision. But lenses aren't just used for vision or to help us see, right? We can have lenses on cameras and things like that as well. So it's just that piece of transparent or see-through material. Our last vocabulary word is oxygen. Oxygen is a colorless, that means no color. Odorless, that means no smell, gas. 
It's also the life-supporting component of the air. So I can't really show you a picture of oxygen, right? It says it's colorless. We can't see it, it has no color, and it's odorless, it's a gas. But oxygen is all around you. We breathe in oxygen every day. And if we didn't have oxygen, we wouldn't be able to breathe. So it's really super important. All right, now let's go ahead and read our book and see if you can hear all six of those words as I read. Book of How Things Work. The author is Amy Shields, and again, this is nonfiction, right? It's true information, real facts. So we have a lot of photographs in here. So we actually don't have an illustrator listed. All right, here's our first question. How does water turn to ice? Water turns to ice when it loses heat. Cold air pulls heat out of water. The temperature has to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius to make water begin to freeze. Frozen water is lighter than liquid water. That's why ice cubes float. Hmm. How does popcorn pop? Every corn cob is covered with seeds. They are called kernels. You can see them right up here. Popcorn kernels are wrapped in a watertight shell. The seed is inside with a little bit of water. When a popcorn kernel is heated, the water inside turns to steam. The steam creates pressure within the kernel, causing it to burst. It's an explosion strong enough to turn the seed inside out, making popcorn. So it's all that pressure building up inside the kernel. How does the doctor know I'm healthy? Doctors use their senses to help people. They look, listen, and touch. A healthy throat is pink and wet. Red splotches, white dots, swollen tonsils, or an infected ovola are all signs that can tell a doctor you are sick. Doctors say a beating heart sounds like lub dub, lub dub. What do you think? Listening to your body is a way of making sure it's working right. Here's an experiment that you could do. You can use two funnels and some plastic tubing, and you can actually listen to someone's heartbeat. How do planes fly? Airplanes have really big engines, and that's one thing that helps them fly. But it's really all about air. Try throwing a piece of paper. It doesn't go very far. Fold that paper into an airplane with wings and it will soar. The air works on the wings of your paper airplane, just like it does on a real plane. The air below the wings pushes up harder than the air flowing over the top of the wing. Hold your hand out the car window sometime and experiment. If your hand is tipped just the right way, it will vroom up. Airplane wings are tipped just right for flying. So if that plane had a different shape, it wouldn't work nearly as well. How do dinosaur bones become fossils? Dinosaurs went extinct or died out long ago, but their bones are still being found. These bones have become fossils. How do bones become fossils? First, the dinosaur had to die in sand or mud so it would get covered over and preserved. Over a very, very long time, the ground became rock and the bones became fossils. So they're preserved, right? That means they're still in their same state. You can still see that shape and size of them. They didn't break down over time. How do balloons float? Floating balloons are filled with helium. Helium is a gas that is lighter than air. Because it is lighter, gravity has less pull on it and it floats. If you let go of a helium balloon, it could go up for four miles before it pops. How are some buildings so tall? About 130 years ago, some cities had no more land to build upon. There was no room to build bigger, so they had to build higher. So up they went with the help of a new invention, a safe, fast elevator. People called these new buildings skyscrapers. How does an elevator go up and down? An elevator carries people up and down in tall buildings. Imagine a box with a string on top. The string goes up and over a rolling wheel above. On the other side of the wheel, the string is attached to a weight. The string has to be short, so when the weight is on the ground, the box is lifted up. That's the idea of an elevator. The rolling wheel of an elevator is called a pulley. People invented pulleys thousands of years ago. 
Brio elevators use strong cables instead of string, and they have engines that move the cables, lifting and lowering the box. And they have lots of electronics to keep people safe. Don't worry, riding an elevator is safer than walking upstairs. How do the stairs on an escalator disappear? The stairs don't really disappear. The stairs are all hooked together in a loop. After your ride ends at the top, the stairs slide under a metal plate. Then upside down, they slide back to the bottom. The loop of stairs goes around and around. Here are some other movers on loops. Bulldozers, bike chains, roller coasters. How do boats float? Boats float because as they push their weight on the water, the water pushes back. The shape of a boat helps the water push back with enough force to hold the boat up. Next time you go for a swim, see how your body works in the water. If you lie flat on the water, it is easier to float. If you hug your knees and ball up, you will sink. Here's another experiment you can do, the float a boat experiment. It says a flat bottom gives water more to push against. Experiment with different shapes of boats. So for this one, you'll need some Play-Doh to make different shapes with in a bowl of water, and you can make some different shaped boats. How do mirrors work? You can see yourself in anything smooth and shiny. Most mirrors are smooth pieces of glass. One side of the glass is painted with a shiny metal. The smooth glass lets light in and the shiny metal bounces it back. Mirrors show you the light from your face. Mirrors do not work in the dark. Everyone's eyes are different. Some people need glasses to help their eyes see better. For you to see perfectly, light needs to reach one spot on the back of each eye. If your eye isn't shaped right to focus the light, lenses and glasses can be shaped to focus the light for you. So that is how glasses help people see. Hmm, how does a toilet work? For every animal that eats, they poop. Human animals too. People invented toilets so we didn't have to go outside to poop. How do they work? When you flush, a big gush of water whooshes into your toilet bowl. All this extra water pushes the waste into a pipe. Then the power of gravity takes the waste out of your house. But what is gravity? It pulls everything toward the ground, even your feet. Without the force of gravity, there would be no life on Earth. Air, water, humans, everything would fly off into space. Gravity is the force within our massive planet Earth that holds our world together. And there are some facts about poop, if you would like to check this book out and read more. <laughs> How do fish breathe underwater? All animals need oxygen to live. Animals that breathe air have lungs that can get oxygen from air. Fish have gills to get oxygen from water. Fish gills have to be underwater to work. Gills are feathery, frilly, soft organs that float like waving fingers. Without water, they cannot float. They stick together and they cannot get oxygen. Look, look at that cute little salamander. All right, that's the end. There are some other experiments that you could try at home, as well as some websites and books you might also like. So if you wanted to look for this book at your local library and check it out, it's called Book of How Things Work, and the author was Amy Shields. There's some really fun stuff in here and a lot of little tiny facts that I couldn't read because there's not time. So if you check it out, there'll be even more for you to learn. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed our science story today, and I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.